Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Kay Francis, George Brent, Gene Parker, and Jim Amici in The Rains Came. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. For most of us in this part of the world, India has always been obscured by mystery. We think of it as a faraway land of mystic cults and strange customs, of grave turbaned men and veiled women, of elephants and shiny teak and beautiful exotic temples. All this is India, land of eternal fascination. Louis Bromfield has tellingly captured this enchantment in his novel, The Rains Came, a love story of great dramatic intensity. The book has already made a hit picture for 20th Century Fox, and tonight we bring you our radio production of this vital story. Both the book and the picture were bestsellers, and it's brought to you tonight by another bestseller, Lux Toilet Soap. So many women have put Lux Toilet Soap on their beauty list <laughs> that they've, they've made it a bestseller from India to Indiana. The Rains Came is the drama of a group of people from our own world who, for one reason or another, are living in Ranchipur, a native state of India's back country. The central character is Tom Ransom, a talented painter who's found in India life is too lazy for his own good. It takes an earthquake and a flood to reveal the vein of iron beneath his boredom. To bring you the star who played this role in the picture, we had to reach almost halfway to India because George Brent was enjoying himself in the middle of the Pacific Ocean in Honolulu. When we talked to him by radio telephone, we couldn't actually hear the surf at Waikiki, but we had to compete with it to get George on the next steamer for the mainland. Casting the part of Lady Esketh gave us a chance to answer all your requests for the return to this stage of Kay Francis. She's here tonight as the woman who redeemed herself by fighting the terror that came to Ranchipur. And there are two other people who are important to this story. Fern, the young American girl, who will be played for us by Jean Parker, and Major Safdie, a young native surgeon, played tonight by Jim Amici. Now all the enchantment of the East lies before us as we raise the curtain on Act One of The Rains Came, starring Kay Francis as Lady Esketh, George Brent as Tom Ransom, Jim Amici as Major Safty, and Jean Parker as Fern. In the heart of modern India, surrounded by the frowning cliffs of the hill country, lies the ancient city of Ranchipur. Each year the rains come to Ranchipur, turning the valley into a dense jungle, alive with color and fragrance. Each year in the parched weeks before the monsoon, when the ground lies hard and cracked in the broiling sun, the natives lift their voices in a chant as old as India, the prayer for rain. On the veranda of Tom Ransom's house, the bamboo screen is drawn against the morning heat. Ransom, a rather dissipated young in Englishman, is entertaining a native friend, Major Rama Safti. They've been silent for some time as they listen to the eerie strain of native music coming from somewhere inside the house. You know, Major, that's one of the mysteries of India I'll never be able to figure out. What? The stringless quartet as played by the houseboys. Do they really enjoy it? <laughs> Do you enjoy it, Major? I'm Indian. These are the songs of my land. Mm. Brandy and soda. Thanks, but I'd better not. I may have to operate this afternoon, and there's to be a conference with the Maharaja at the palace. In this heat, Major, your energy appalls me. It's not really hot. Only 109 in the shade. Yes, I've been trying to drown that thought in a brandy and soda. Don't remind me. <laughs> Tom, aren't you ever going to finish it? Finish what? That painting over there. Oh, is there any hurry? I thought you came to India to paint. You haven't done a stroke in that canvas since the last time I was Stop. here. Stop, you're making me perspire. When do you suppose this heat will let up? If the rains would only come. 
They're long overdue. Yes, they were praying at the temple as I drove by this morning. I had half a mind to join them. In prayer? I didn't know you had faith in anything, Tom. Now, that's where you're wrong. I have faith in a lot of things. For instance, uh, well, look down there in the square. You see her? Queen Victoria. That, that old statue? Ah, uh, to you she's only a statue, but to me she's an old friend. A living reminder of the fine, brave days before the world went to seed. There she stands in her cast-iron petticoats, unconcerned with wars and appeasement, serene as ever. Bless her soul. <laughs> the world's not as bad as you think, Tom. No, just committing suicide as fast as it knows how. I can't agree with you. Here in Ranchipur, we're trying to make it a little better. The whole world? Our world. Oh. India in general, Ranchipur in particular. I rather like the old place just as it is. Yes, but you see it as an artist. I see it as an Indian and a doctor. My people are crying for help after centuries of disease, poverty, and superstition. They must change. Well, change anything you want and more power to you. Only don't try to change me. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. Sahib, Ransom. Sahib. Yes? Carriage, come through gate, Sahib. Well, confound it. Who is it? Two, lady. Two, Sahib. Why, it's the American girl and her mother from the mission. Well, they're not stopping here, are they? I'm afraid they are, Tom. Mother, please. Please don't ask Mr. Ransom. I'll die if you do. Honest, I will. Don't be silly, child. Here, hold the reins. Oh, Mother, please. If Mr. Ransom wanted to know us, he'd have called on us. He will, my dear. He will. There he is on the veranda. Good morning, Mr. Ransom. Good morning. Oh, here he comes. Oh, Mother. Quiet, child. Something I can do for you? I'm Mrs. Simon, Mr. Ransom. How do you do? And this is my little girl, my daughter, Fern. How do you do? Hello. Uh, Mr. Ransom, do forgive me for intruding, but I'm so anxious to have you at a little party I'm giving this afternoon for Lily Hoggett Eggbury and some of the nicer English people of Ranchapur. Oh, yes. Well, I'm, I'm sorry I promised the Major here. You know Major Safty, of course, director of the state medical department. I believe we've met. How do you do? Oh, yes. I see. You see, uh, the Major and I had arranged some tennis. Oh, I'm sure Major Safty won't mind giving up his tennis just this once. Well, that's for Mr. Ransom to decide. See, you will be able to come, Mr. Ransom. Five o'clock for tea. We'll be looking for you. Good morning. Now, why did I say I'd go? <laughs> why? You didn't. She did. <laughs> Mr. Ransom is here. Put some powder on your nose. Oh, it keeps melting off. Mother, if you think he'd marry me, you're on the wrong track. How dare you insinuate that I'd stoop to anything oh, so un... All right, all right. Let's not argue. Okay, doke I'm ready. Okay, doke I don't know why you persist in using that American slang. Oh, Mr. Ransom. Uh, well, yes, yes. Mr. Ransom, you weren't leaving, were you? Oh, no, no, I was just... Mustn't sorry. run away so soon. I've so wanted for you and Fern to get well acquainted. Oh, uh, may I get you a drink, Mr. Ransom? A drink? Oh, well, you're very kind. Wait uh, right here. I'll send one of the boys. You know what Mother means by a drink, don't you? I beg your pardon? Lemonade. Lemonade? Oh, not lemonade. Wouldn't you like something a little stronger? Oh, I see. My reputation has preceded me. Well, Father keeps a little whiskey, in case of snake bites and things. Well, the snakes have been rather trying this afternoon. I'll get some for you. Come inside. Here. But you mustn't tell. I'll say it was a cobra. Thank you. But I hope I'm not keeping you from your guests. They're not my guests. That's Mother's idea of high society. They're all excited today because you're here. Oh, should I be flattered? They say dreadful things about you. What sort of things? Oh, that you're a drunkard and a bounder and a remittance man. But they'll hang around you just the same because your father was an earl and... Well, I suppose I shouldn't talk like this. Why not? I, I don't, don't mind. I don't care what they say about you. Because I know what you're really like. I've watched you from my window every time you've passed by. Sometimes I think you're the only person in Ranchapur I don't hate. What? You see, Mr. Ransom, I wanted to... to meet you for a long time. But not this way. Not with Mother throwing me at your head. Oh, my dear child, really. I'm, I'm not a child. I'm more than 18. I'm a woman. And I need your help. I'm in trouble. Trouble? Yes, I... Oh, it's so hard to tell you. Oh, it needn't be. Maybe I can help. Is there a man mixed up in it? No. 
except you. Help me? Mr. Ransom, I've got to get away from here. I can't stand it any longer. Yes, uh, what's the matter? They want to run my life for me, Mother and Dad. They want me to go on living this phony life they think is so wonderful. And Mother pretending we're not just missionaries. You will help me, won't you? Yes, but what can I do? Well, you know all about the world and women and things like that. Oh, yeah, well, if it's advice you want... I need I'll... more than advice. I... I haven't any money. I couldn't do that. But I only need a little, just enough to get me where I want to go. I'd paid back, honest, every cent. It isn't the money, my child. I told you I'm not a child. Now, it's just that I can't be directly responsible for what might happen to you. Don't you see the position it would put me in? I didn't think you cared about respectability. I don't. Well, neither do I. I want to get everything there is to be had out of life. I want to live. I want a career. Yes, but where would you go? Well, on the stage. The stage? Why not? I'm not bad looking. And I have very nice legs. And oh, they... yes, yes. I'm sure you have, but I don't think really I'm in the real. Ransom, Sahib. Oh, yes? Uh, you want to see me? Sahib, I bring a message from the palace, from the Her Highness the Maharani. Well? The Maharani wishes you might forgive the short notice. But would it be possible for the sahib to attend a dinner at the palace this evening? Oh, yes, of course. It is in honor of the English visitors to Ranchi for Lord and Lady Escott. Will you tell the Maharani I shall be happy to attend? Yes, sahib. Well, uh, Miss Fern, I, I'm afraid of it means leaving at once if I'm to be on time. You know the Maharani and... Uh, You're glad to get away, aren't well, you? I, uh, oh, certainly not. I don't blame you. Will I see you again? Well, of course. Uh, when? Well, uh, you see, it's... I uh, know. You don't want to be bothered with me. But my dear girl... Uh... I don't blame you for that either. Good night. Your Highness, I received your invitation. Good evening, Ransom. I'm glad you could come. To see you again is one of the few thrills left in life, Your Highness. <laughs> you say that as if you meant it. I do mean it, Your Highness. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Your Highness. My wife has been looking forward to your visit all day. Do you know why, Ransom? You are the only poker player in Ranchipur who knows enough not to draw to an inside straight. <laughs> Thank you, Your Highness. Well, come along now, and I'll introduce you to our guests of honor. Delighted. They have only just arrived in Ranchipur. You will not like Lord Eskett, but his wife is a good deal younger and very pretty. Oh, Your Highness, really. Lady Eskett, this is Mr. Ransom. Well. Well, hello, Edwina. Hello, Tom. We heard of a person called Ransom living in Ranchipur. I never dreamed it was you. Oh, how nice that you know each other. Oh, yes, we're old friends. Aren't we, Edwina? Very old friends. But you haven't met my husband, Tom. Albert? Yes? Albert, this is Tom Ransom. You've heard me speak of him. Uh, yes, yes, uh, uh, Ransom, of course. Uh, how do you do? How do you do? Your Highness, dinner is served. Ransom, you may take me in. With pleasure, Your Highness. Edwina. Yes, Albert. What's the matter? That fellow Ransom, you, you never mentioned him to me. Didn't I? I thought I did. Huh. Now that you've met one of your own kind, I, I suppose you'll be grand for days. Why do you always make a point of criticizing men like Tom Ransom? Because he happens to be a gentleman? If he's a gentleman, why is he living here in India? He's got plenty of money, hasn't he? I don't imagine Tom has ever thought of money, one way or another, in all his life. Oh, huh. one of those radicals. Well, have you seen enough of the palace? Too much. Then perhaps you'd better go back. Not yet, Tom. I think I'd like some air. Of course. There's a balcony here. Ah, that's better. It's beginning to look like rain at last. You haven't told me what you're doing here, Tom. Oh, I came out seven years ago to paint the Maharaja's portrait. I've been here ever since. Not a very exciting life, is it? No. Is yours? <laughs> now and then. What brought you all the way up here to Ranchipur? The Maharaja's horses. Albert's very fond of horses. The only thing he is fond of, except money. And have you become fond of money, too? Passionately. It used to be just excitement. <laughs> you can't live on excitement alone. We found that out, didn't we? I didn't mind. There was a time, mind you, when I thought seriously of marrying you. Well, how touching of you, Tom. <laughs> I never suspected. We've come a long way since then. A long way apart. What do you mean? You'd know if you lived here for a while. Here in Ranchipur, the important things in life are the elemental things, such as crops, starvation, and the weather. In Europe, when someone says it looks like rain, in all probability, is trying to make polite conversation. 
But here, where people die as easily as they're born, he's speaking in terms of life and death. You'll know what I mean if the rains come while you're still here. Listen to the natives now. They're praying for it. You hear? <sighs> oh, I hope I'm not keeping you up. You've changed, Tom. You didn't used to be such a windbag. You haven't changed, Edwina. Haven't I? You're still a lovely creature. Am I? Very lovely. You're... Well, go on. Uh, you are doing so well, Tom. You like that, don't you? My making love to you. Should I be shocked? Or did you only bring me down here to see the palace? <laughs> We're pretty crude, aren't we, you and I? Listen. The rain, it's come at last. We'd better go back now. Do you want to? Yes. <laughs> Very well, Tom. The guests seem to have increased. I don't suppose they'll notice we've even been gone. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Major. Tom, who's the pale copper Apollo? Major Safty. Hmm. Not bad looking, is he? In fact, he's very handsome. Well, don't waste your time. He's a surgeon and a scientist. Any interest he might have in romance would be purely biological. You make him sound even more exciting. Oh, there you are, Edwina. I've been looking everywhere for you. Are you ready to go? Whenever you are, Albert. I think I'm going to be ill, this confounded climate. I'm sorry, Albert. Oh, uh, oh, Mr. Ransom tells me there's a doctor here in Ranchapur. He's not at all bad. If you're no better in the morning, we can send for him. What was his name, Tom? Sefty. Major Rama Sefty. Oh, yes. Thank you. Good night, Tom. Good night. Hello. What? Who's there? It's me, Fern Simon. Uh, what, what, what are you... What, what? I've been waiting here for you. Your boy said he didn't know when you'd be coming in, yes, so What I'd... do you want? What are you doing here? I've run away from home. I'm never going back. You can't do that. Why not? Well, because I told you, I, I can't take the responsibility. I know. But since we talked this afternoon, I figured out another way you can help me. Oh, yes? Well, what way? Well, I want you to let me stay here tonight. You're, have you any idea what you're saying? Of course I have. Don't you see? Then everyone would think... Well, anyway, there'd be such a scandal, I'd have to leave Ranchapur. They'd send me away. And you really want to acquire a, a tarnished reputation? Yes, I don't care what they say about me. Don't you? Well, that's all very well, but why in the name of the million gods of India did you have to choose me? It shouldn't matter a bit to you. Your reputation is already so tarnished. <laughs> Please, don't you dare laugh at me. Oh, listen to me, child. You're going straight home. I'm not going home. I'm never going home. Do you want me to put you out by force? You won't. I'd make a scene, and you're the kind of man who hates scenes. Oh, mm. well, <clears throat> that still doesn't solve anything, does it? Listen, if you'll just let me stay tonight, I'll go in the morning and I'll never see you again. You've got to let me... I can't really be hearing this. Do you realize, my dear young lady, that you've come closer to shocking me than anything that has ever happened to me in my entire life? Now, let's at least try to be sensible about this. Your name's Fern, isn't it? Yes. Mine's Tom. Yes, Tom. You realize that legally you'll be free to do as you please on your 21st birthday. I'll die if I have to wait that long. Oh, can't be as bad as all that. Believe me, I'm not trying to be fatherly. I, I want to be your friend. Will you shake on it? All right. Good. Now, as your friend, let me give you some rather stuffy advice. Go home now and think it over. You'll find a much better way out. It may be a job, it may be marriage. Anyway, it'll be something. You understand that I'm thinking only of what's best for you. You trust me for that, don't you? I'll do anything you say. And first of all, you're going home now. But I... Uh, now, 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 you promise but, me. Well, it wouldn't be so bad if... if I could only see you now and then. Of course. Whenever you want. Thank you, Tom. You see... That's important, because, well, I guess I love you. If I didn't, I wouldn't be going home now. Goodbye.
In a few moments, our stars Kay Francis, George Brent, Jim Amici, and Gene Parker will return in Act Two of The Rains Came. Now, for a moment, let's listen in on a group of college girls. <laughs> Phew, what a nice, quiet little spot. Just the thing to calm my frayed nerves after flunking history, too. What do you mean, flunk? No prof would ever flunk a girl as good-looking as you are, Jean. <laughs> oh, so when a woman's worried to death, it's funny, is it? And I suppose it's equally entertaining that I'm as petless as a prune, and in just three quarters of an hour, I've got to be leaving here on a date. Jean, you're just not the type to get sympathy. You have too many bows. And too many dates. And besides, it's your night for first whack at the bathroom. And I can get my bath without waiting in line. Now there is a cheering thought. <laughs> Better hurry up. Right. Go on, dear, get going. Remember, we've we'll got to wait in line. Ah, that's just about right. Oh, boy, does this feel good. I love the way good old Lux soap lathers. Certainly goes to work like magic cleaning you up. And gosh, does this bath pep you up. I can feel all my little troubles floating away. Begins to look like little Jeannie might survive. Just a few minutes more of this bliss before my loving roommates batter down the door. Oh, all right, okay. I'll be out in two minutes. Gosh, but I feel like a new woman. Wonderful Lux soap bath. You certainly do the trick. Here you are, Bill, one college gal in good condition who probably just flunked a history exam but is now ready for an evening of fun, an evening of gaiety. <laughs> Jean is young, but she's clever. Already she solved an important feminine problem. She's found the way to throw off her worries and fatigue when evening comes around and be what every woman really wants to be, vivacious, gay, and attractive. She's discovered that a few moments' relaxation in a Lux soap bath will work wonders. Its active lather carries away perspiration, every trace of dust and dirt, makes you sure of skin that's really fresh and sweet. Famous Hollywood screen stars know this and use their complexion soap as a bath soap, too. You'll like the luxury of a daily Lux soap bath, the delicate fragrance it leaves on your skin. Remember, daintiness is important, and gentle Lux toilet soap makes you sure. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of The Rains Came, starring George Brent as Tom Ransom, Kay Francis as Lady Esketh, Jean Parker as Fern, and Jim Amici as Major Safty. <laughs> two days have passed, and the rain still falls on Ranchapur. Edwina Esketh has made good use of these two days in becoming acquainted with Major Safti. Now in the Maharani's school of music, they sit close together, Lady Esketh and the copper-colored doctor of Ranchipur. Do you like music, Lady Esketh? Oh, in London I have a box at Covent Garden as a matter of course. Frankly, I like this sort better. Who's that man, Major? Jamnaz Singh, the Rajput singer. What kind of a song is it? A love song. Oh. Do you know the song? Yes. The words are traditional, but the music is improvised. Free variations. How do the words go? It's in the ancient language, the ceremonial language. I, uh, I don't know it as well as I should. Try, please. Well, it's, it's a bit florid. Oh, that my lyre were of purest jade. Its strings of fine spun gold that I, I might sing with merit of your beauty. The fiery sun burns in your lips. They have breathed upon the cold stone that was my heart and set it beating to the measure of my song. Your... Don't stop. Your hands hold my life, my being. Drop it and I perish. But in your heart, my love has found a home, and it can never die. And it can never die. <laughs> it is a lot of sentimental nonsense, isn't it? Perhaps. Seated 
minute, Mr. Ransom. Lady Esketh will be down in just a moment. Thank you. May I offer you a drink, sir? You may. Brandy and soda, and make it strong. Very good, sir. By the way, how is Lord Esketh this evening? Not too well, sir. Major Softy has advised him to remain in bed. Hello, Tom. Good of you to call for me. Am I late? Oh, we've plenty of time. Dinners at the palace always begin at the fashionable half past eight. Your drink, sir. Thank you. That will be your bait. Very good, my lady. Well, Tom, I hear you've been having adventures. Oh, you've heard too. It's all of a rancher, poor. The young, what's her name, Simon person was seen leaving your house at a very ugly hour. I'm a victim of circumstances. If you didn't drink so much, you wouldn't always be getting in trouble. At least my weakness is wine. What do you mean by that? You know what I mean. Major Safty. <laughs> Listen to who's moralizing. I suppose it comes from playing around missions. I never play around missions. I don't play around hospitals either. Don't be catty, Tom. Well, I do believe that you're jealous. You know perfectly well I'm not jealous. If there ever was anything between us, we both know it's finished now. Dead and gone. Then why do you come here and act in this stupid manner? Because I see something happening I don't like. Stop talking like a copybook. It's not becoming. Well, when are you leaving Ranchipur? We intended to go tomorrow, but with Albert ill... Too ill to travel? No. Then why don't you go? You are a beast, aren't you? Oh, Tom, we've double-crossed almost everyone in the world. Let's not start on each other. Oh, I don't want to interfere, really. But Ram is my friend, and I'm afraid... If you only knew how mistaken you are. He's the one man I've ever met I haven't been able to make an impression on. And you don't like that, do you? I'm pretending I don't care. Well, are you sober enough to take me to dinner? Quite. Your cape. Thank you. I'll carry it. Tom. Yes? Tom, is there something in the air tonight? Something I... I can't describe it. Depressing? Yes, that's it. Yes, I felt it too. The rain should have cooled it off, but it hasn't. It's, it's more than the heat. The air's heavy. I've had a feeling all day that, that something's going to happen. Of course. You're going to meet Major Safty at dinner. Get him to show you the palace. It's very interesting. Thanks. I'm sure it is. And over there is the hill country and the dam 20 miles away. You can see the dam from this balcony in the daytime. By the way, you ought to go out and visit our waterworks, Lady Asketh. We're proud of them. I shall. Will you take me, Major? <laughs> Gladly. Major Safty, do you know that all of your friends have been warning me to leave town? Leave town? Why? Why do you think? Because they feel that I'm a bad influence on you. Why, that's nonsense. Isn't it? You're not afraid of me, are you, Major? <laughs> Why, of course not. You wouldn't feel relieved if I left? No, as a matter of fact, I'd miss you. I've enjoyed your company very much. I was afraid you'd take that attitude. What attitude? Lying to me. But I wasn't... Don't bother to explain, Major. You know perfectly well what I'm thinking. And I know what you're thinking. I've done everything but fall at your feet and you haven't even blinked. So I think I will leave. Tomorrow morning. What? I just told you... Yes, it you was very I... sweet of you, Major. But I think I'll go. Not because of what might happen to you, but because of what might happen to me if I stayed. What was that? It felt like... It was a tremor, I believe. You mean an earthquake? We have them here quite often. They're usually not very serious. Oh, well, you do have them often. We'd better get off this balcony. Come inside quickly. You don't think there's any danger? I don't know. If it should continue... Are you all right? Yes. Yes, I, I'm all right. The whole city has fallen. I must get to the hospital at once. They'll need me there. Yes, of course. I'll take care of her, Rama. Thank you. I'll have to hurry. Tom. Oh, I'm looking for a bottle of brandy. Not even that. Left. Tom, I can't stay here. I must get back to Albert. No, it's no use. The guest palace is gone. Every stone. Oh. Well, then I suppose Albert... Albert is dead. I'm afraid so. Albert is dead. 
beastly of me, isn't it? I can't feel any emotion. Listen. Another quake? No, it's water. Of course. The dam's gone, too. The dam? We sweep past here 20 feet deep. What are we going to do? We'll have to reach higher ground. There's a house up on the hill. Can we make it in time? Well, it's worth a try. Hold on to my arm. Don't let go. Come on. Hurry. Help me, Tom. Help me! Did I fall asleep? Exhaustion. I dropped off myself. How's the weather this fine morning? Raining. The water's rising every second. I'm afraid we're cut off up here. Well, we're still alive. What's that wailing? Natives. That's India for you. They've been praying for the rains all spring, and now they're praying for them to go away. It might be just as well if we joined in. Hello! Look, it's a rowboat. Is that a girl in it? Why, it's... it's the Simon girl. Not really. Your young light of love coming to snatch you from a watery grave. How sweet, Tom. Mr. Ransom! Mr. Ransom! Here, yeah, Fern, this way. Oh, thank heaven you're safe. Yeah, give me your hand. What are you doing here? I... I didn't close my eyes all night. I was afraid you'd be drowned. Yes, but how did you know where I was? I went by your house. It's underwater. But your servant was sitting on the roof. He told me you'd been to the palace, and I, I just went looking. Oh. Oh, uh, Edwina, this is Miss Simon, Lady Escott. How do you do? How do you do? We are glad to see you. If you hadn't come, we might have died of starvation. Or boredom. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you better sit down, Fern. You look all in. Well, I thought if you're all right, I'd bring you back to the mission. It's safe then. Well, let's see. Your boat will just about hold two, one to row and one to bail. Do you two think you can manage it? Yes, I think so. No, you can't. There's plenty of time for several trips. I really, I'm all right. Now, now, no more paddling for you, young lady, until you've had some rest. <laughs> Come inside here out of the rain. I, I don't need any rest. You're not to worry now. I'll take Lady Escott, and I'll come back for you. In the meantime, lie down there and try to get some sleep. I'm not in your way being here, am I? Oh, are you going to apologize for saving our lives? It's only one of the reasons I came. I wanted to tell you you were in no danger. Well, that's reassuring. I mean, for me. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. When my father and mother found out I'd been to your house, they wouldn't believe the truth. So I just let them think I had stayed all night. Now, now, don't worry about that. Mother pretended to be sore. I don't think she really was so, because, you see, you see, if we got married, she could spend the rest of her life hobnobbing with high society in England. Yes, you know, I've often wondered why you Americans ever bothered to stage that revolution of yours. Anyway, I thought you'd like to know you won't have to marry me. Unless... Unless what? Unless you... you decide to change your mind. Hmm. Poor kid. Well? She's asleep. Get in the boat. You know, Tom, I never saw a more obvious case of calf love in all my life. Her face lights up like fireworks every time she looks at you. But that's what you like, isn't it? That's the real reason you and I broke up. You always wanted a woman to treat you like a god. And I treated you as if you were just as bad as myself. Get in the boat. Hello, Major. I've been worried about you. I'm glad to see you safe. I had a message to report here at the palace. What's up? The Maharaja is... is dead. The Maharaja? He was crushed in the second quake. He among a few hundred thousand others. The earth knows no difference in caste. Her Highness, the Maharani. My good and loyal friends, Ranchipur has been struck a cruel blow. The weakness in our national character has been that we incline to blame catastrophe on the gods and fail in our duty. I don't propose to let that happen here. We must call on all our strength, all our resolution, all our courage, if we are to bring our people to safety. Each of you must do his part. 
I have chosen you here because I know you will not fail me. The Maharaja is dead. In his name, I proclaim a state of emergency. Rashid, your police will work with the army. Yes, Ma Sahib. Major Safti, have you any news? I have bad news. It's come already sooner than I expected. Several cases of plague in the sweeper's quarter. Half the water in Ranchapur must be polluted. Do what you can to keep the plague from spreading. Burn down the whole quarter if you must. Yes, my sir. The rest of you know your duty. Do it. Ransom, I want you to stay. Of course, Your Highness. Ransom, I said I could depend on this little group. I meant you too. I don't know why, Your Highness. Because you're really one of us. Thank you. I need a personal aide de camp, someone I can depend on to carry out my orders and use his own head if he has to. Do you think that you can do it? If you think I can? I know you can. Well, they're at it again, aren't they? Can you blame them? Their homes are gone, their families, their whole world. And I sit safely here in the American mission, waiting for a plane to get through to take me home. Oh, come on. Play me a hand of casino. I... I don't know how. Is there anything you do know? Oh, I'm sorry. Don't mind me. It's my foul disposition. I don't mind. I'm too happy to mind anything. Happy? Oh. Tom, I suppose. Last night he came back for me. Not because he wanted to, but because he... His face was so tired kind. I knew then there could never be anybody else. There never will be anybody else. You have got it badly, haven't you? I suppose so. You know what you've picked out for yourself? Yes. Then there's no use warning you. No. Very well. Lady Eskett, what would you do if you were in my place? I wouldn't be in your place. I'd never let any man mean that much to me. Hello? Anybody here? Yes, Mr. Smiley. Who's that? Father's assistant. Oh, hello, Fern. I've got a message for you. From Tom Ransom? Yes, he says they put him to work and he needs an assistant. And he... he wants me? Well, if you'd like to come. Oh, I'm ready. Give me just a minute. She seems pretty anxious. It must be rather nice to be needed somewhere. Everyone's needed now. It's the worst mess I've ever heard of. They burned half the city. They've got sentries at all the wells and open water ditches. And still the plague is spreading. Every bed in the hospital's filled and not, not half enough doctors and nurses to go around. The Maharani sent out a call for volunteers. Volunteers? Nurses? It's not, not how much they know right now. That's not important. It's how much dirt they can stand and plague and the, the sight of men dying like flies. Can they use anybody? Anybody who's willing to take his chances with the plague. Why? I'd like to go with you, please, as a volunteer. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille brings you George Brent, Kay Francis, Jean Parker, and Jim Amici, in Act Three of The Rains Came. Now, I'm very happy to have here an unusual guest, Miss Loretta Francell. Miss Francell, will you tell the audience about yourself? You mean I'm Carol Lombard's hairdresser? Well, yes, but I'm afraid that we'll have to ask you to explain that a little bit. I know my sister's hairdresser has a shop, and she goes there every week and stays for hours. <laughs> well, I'm not that kind of a hairdresser. It's my job to go with Miss Lombard to the studios and photographers and see that her hair never gets the least bit out of place. A screen star often has a good many costume changes. Does that disarrange her hair? Well, no. I just tie a piece of tulle around her hair, and that protects it. A piece of tulle, eh? Well, that sounds like a good idea. A tip from Hollywood. And speaking of tips from Hollywood, what about Miss Lombard's complexion? It's a perfectly beautiful complexion, if that's what you mean. But I guess you mean she uses Lux Toilet Soap. You guessed it. Naturally, I'm interested in anything you can tell us about our product. Well, I can tell you that Miss Lombard is really enthusiastic about active lather facials with Lux Soap. 
She's made them her regular bedtime beauty care. And no matter how tired she is, she never neglects it. Thank you, Miss Fransell, for this interesting interview. Now that we've met you, we're going to watch Miss Lombard's hairstyles with more interest than ever. When a famous screen star tells you she likes Lux Toilet Soap and uses it regularly, you can be sure that means one thing. It means Lux Toilet Soap really works, really does what a complexion soap should do. Lux Toilet Soap is gentle and mild, and its active lather gives skin protection it needs for loveliness. Now, I'm going to tell you how Carol Lombard uses Lux Toilet Soap for an active lather facial. Here are her own words. First, I work up a generous Lux Soap lather and smooth it lightly into my skin. Next, I rinse with warm water and then with cool. I dry my face by patting the skin very lightly. I'm always delighted when I see how smooth my skin feels and how fresh it looks. Simple, isn't it? So why not try this care regularly for a while? Say, 30 days. Let this fine white complexion soap screen stars use help you have really beautiful skin, help you win the admiration that it makes any woman happy to have. Get three cakes of Hollywood's favorite soap, Lux Toilet Soap, tomorrow. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on Act Three of The Rains Came. In the wake of the flood, while Ranchipur strives to rebuild itself, has come an even greater scourge cholera, the dread plague of India. The hospital corridors are choked with the dead and dying, and through this labyrinth of disaster move the quiet figures of the volunteer nurses. Among them, Lady Edwina Escott. With Major Safty, she moves down the long line, bringing hope and cheer to fevered souls. A king, sahib. A king, sahib. Yes, yes, my friend. Try to sleep. Try to sleep, my friend. Is there anything I can do for him? There's nothing anyone can do. I lay my hand on the heads. That doesn't help except to give them courage. You see, they know I'm high caste. And for centuries, they've been made to step aside so their shadows won't fall on us and pollute us. They look at you so, as if they trusted you. They have no one else to trust. You've done a wonderful thing coming here like this. It isn't easy if you've never done it before. It's funny how quickly one gets used to things. I'm not even ill anymore, as I was 20 times the first day. And yet you stayed. Yes, I stayed. Why? Never mind, you don't have to answer me. But remember that you're in constant danger. Don't be afraid to use plenty of disinfectant. We don't want anything to happen to you. You're too valuable. Valuable? I? Is that so strange? Yes. You see, I'm not used to being needed anywhere. the work going? As well as can be expected, Your Highness. My reports of you are very good. Thank you. You have a brandy and soda? Brandy? Oh, well, yes, I might so. Uh, no, no, thank you. <laughs> Just as you say. Tell me, Ransom, what is Lady Esketh doing at the hospital? Every conceivable filthy and drudging task. Yes, but why is she there? She told me she wanted to help. But that isn't the real reason, is it? No. No. We had plans for Major Safty, the Maharaja and I. I won't be here long, and we had no children, though I always wanted them. Before the Maharaja died, he named his successor, a man whose blood, sympathies, and training fitted him for the responsibility of guiding the state of Ranchipur. That successor was to be Major Safty. Safty? No alien influence must enter his life. He must remain dedicated to his cause. 
Would it hurt him so much to give her up? For a while, it would. But he's young. He'll get over it, I'm certain. I want to do the right thing. For myself, I'd trample her without mercy. But then I was brought up in the hills, where charity is a sign of weakness. I only learned tolerance and humanity after I married. I want to do what he would have done. She is a bad woman, isn't she? Not so much bad as unhappy. Once, long ago, Edwina took a wrong path. Ever since, she's been too stubborn or too proud to turn back. In many ways, she's like your highness. What do you mean by that? That she's outspoken, intelligent, and there's no particular use for other women unless they're over 70. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, she must go. Tell her I'm sending her on the plane tomorrow. Away from Rancho. Away from Major Safty. Tell her she must be ready. Yes, Your Highness. No, I won't go. I won't leave Ranchapur. Not now, Tom. You'd better, when the Maharani gives an order. I don't care. You see, I... I thought it all out. This time, I'm sure I'm right. No, Edwina. Oh, I must be right. It's all been so inevitable. My coming here, meeting him, and then the earthquake and the flood to keep me from leaving. Oh, Tom, believe me. I'm in love. For the first time in my life, completely, honestly in love. I do believe you. So you can tell the Maharani I won't go. She'll probably have you shot. She can, you know. I'll risk it. And will you risk destroying him? I won't destroy him. He loves me. I'm sure of it. And that's why you must go, Edwina. Try to look at it realistically. The Maharani is giving Rama his choice. He can have Ranchipur or you. He can't have both. You're asking me to give up the one chance for happiness that I've ever had. Why, you Don't get me started, Tom. I hate scenes. And it's six o'clock and I'm on duty. Goodbye, Tom. You've done your duty like a good little soldier. Edwina. Come in. What are you doing in the ward so early? I couldn't sleep. I had to come and talk to you. Listen, that music in the village, that's a good sign. Means life is going on again. Means we're going to win out. Last night, for the first time, there were less new cases instead of more. Edwina, you look tired. Oh, I'm not, really. Tom says you're leaving. Oh, Rama. Rama, she can't send me away. Maybe it's just as well. I go through torture every moment because you're in danger here. And nothing must happen to you now. Rama. What is it? Oh, nothing. It just makes me so happy to hear you say that. I never thought when I first met you, it seemed so long ago, that you'd ever say anything like that to me. I wouldn't have said it at that time. Not to the woman I knew then. But now I, I think you're someone different. Please don't think I'm being mystical and Indian, but I don't connect you with her. The woman I met in the summer palace, so shining and glossy and so... So crafty. Rama. Wait. I think I saw that other woman inside you even then. The one who's come here and scrubbed floors and emptied slop pails and fought nausea and weariness and fear. The real woman. That's why I waited. You see, it would have been like taking a counterfeit instead of waiting for the real coin. I wanted you to know what I felt because I think so much of you. I can risk making a fool of myself. Perhaps in your heart you're laughing at me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Now you know my secret, so we'll let the Maharani send you away. And as soon as the worst is over here, I'll come after you, wherever you are. Leave it, poor. You leave all this knowing what it's meant to you and knowing what you do of me. I love you, Edwina. No, no. Oh, Rama. Rama, don't kiss me. Just... Just hold me. Just hold me for a little while. Edwina, what's the matter? You, you're not well. You, you have a fever. No. No, I, I'm just tired. So very tired. 
Edwina. Miss, Miss McDade, Lady Esker is ill. Take over in the ward. Well, Rama, she's resting. Fern is with her. It's cholera? Yes. What are the chances? I don't know. She won't fight. She has no will to live. I... I don't know what to do. Steady. I'm supposed to be a doctor. I'm supposed to help people fight for life, and I want her to live. More than I want to live myself. I tried to tell her she must fight, but I... I couldn't. I couldn't even speak. I'm... I'm gone inside. This won't do. You've got to get hold of yourself. It's no use. I can't help it. I'm Indian. I can't be calm and unemotional. I... I want to tear my clothes. I... You're a man. You're a doctor. I'm not. I'm nothing. I failed. I... I can't save her life. Rama, listen to me. If you lose your way now, you'll never find it again. Think of the Maharani and your duty. Of the Maharaj and all he'd planned for you. Think of all the people who worship and respect you. You're a symbol to them. Something clean and courageous that's been born in all the darkness and filth that was India. You are India. The new India. Don't betray all of us who have faith in you. I'm... I'm sorry, Tom. I'm all right now. It won't happen again. Thank you. Tom. Yes, Fern? She... she wants to see you. Steady now, Rama. Be right back. Tom, look. She gave me all her jewels. I can't take them. It's all right. Tom, is that you? Yes, You're supposed to be resting. You're... You... Don't look so unhappy. I'm not. Tom, I want you to do something for me. Anything. My will. The bank sent a man this morning to draw it up. Oh, but there's no reason for you to be talking about wills. Don't talk nonsense. But Rama says if you'd only fight, if you don't... What's there to fight about? Has anything changed since the last time we talked? Read it. The last paragraph. And I hereby bequeath 100,000 pounds hmm, to the Ranchipur Hospital to be administered under the trusteeship of Major Rama Safti. You are my executor. I want to be sure they get it. I know Albert's lawyers. They'll try to break the will. Is your title to the estate entirely clear? Yes. I made a good bargain for that marriage. Tom. Have you got a ring for Fern? No. Then, then take this one. Does she like sapphires? Oh, but we know. There's a condition attached. You'll have to marry her. I can't. You said you'd do anything. But I wouldn't be any good for her. Stop boasting. She's mad about you. And she thinks you're a god. That's what you've always wanted. We have had such foul luck, you and I. But you picked a winner at last. Marry her, Tom. Promise me. Yes, Edwina. I promise. Now, ask Rama to come in. Rama. Oh, my darling. Talk to me, Rama. Please. When you... Well, we'll... We'll go away from all this. Of course. I've thought it all out. We won't be running away from anything because... There won't be anything else in the world but ourselves. And we'll have each other. Yes. We'll have each other. Just you and I. Up to Kashmir and down the Ganges to Bengal and then perhaps from Calcutta on a little boat through all the islands of the east. The Spice Islands and the Coral Islands and all the places with names like magic spells. Just you and I. And nothing else will matter, will it? Will it? Edwina! Edwina! Rama. She's dead. Edwina. My poor.
poor Edwina. Rama, she told me just a little while ago she wasn't unhappy. Rama, something has come out of the wastes and the tragedy here. A new city started, new lives begun, a new spirit. Edwina felt it, so have I. And when you begin to feel again, so will you. having come and gone, Kay Francis, George Brent, Gene Parker, and Jim Amici are here at our microphone again. How did you leave Hawaii, George? Practically the way I found it, C.B., except for a slight hollow in the beach where I've been lying for four weeks. <laughs> that sounds like a real vacation, George. I'd like to do it myself. <laughs> I think I hear envious sighs from some of our snowbound listeners. Well, it was nice. I just stretched out on the sand every day and worried about having to go back to work. Oh, you just stayed there without moving. Not a quiver, Jean. Ah, that explains it. Somebody should have told him, Jean. Uh-huh. Well, what's the matter? George looks all right to me. He uh, should have had a man come along every hour and turn him over. He's only down on one side. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, George. Next year, lie on the other side and even things up. Well, that's something to look forward to. Wind, <laughs> weather, and the Warner Brothers permitting. Well, with Mr. DeMille permitting, I'd like to say something right now about the product which makes this theater possible. Lux soap. Naturally, I use it myself, so I can say from experience what a fine complexion care it is. Lux soap's a habit with me too, Kay. I like its whiteness, its lovely scent, and the soft feeling it gives your skin. It's really a pleasure to use it. Oh, pardon me, I think Mr. DeMille probably has something to say about next week's play. I certainly have, Jean. Next Monday night, we are presenting the current Paramount screen hit, Remember the Night. And we'll have the same stars who are being applauded for their fine work in the picture, Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray. Also from the cast, we'll, from the picture cast, we'll have Beulah Bondi, Elizabeth Patterson, and Sterling Holloway. Remember the Night is a drama of two people who might never have met if one hadn't been the prosecuting attorney and the other a girl on trial. It's a tender human love story finally performed by these players. So remember the night, and it's next Monday night for this moving play with Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray. That calls for a note on every calendar, Mr. DeMille. I know I'll be in your listening audience. Good night. Good night, baby. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> your performance in The Rain's Game deserves a whole quartet of rainbows. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray in Remember the Night with Beulah Bundy, Elizabeth Patterson, and Sterling Holloway. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Martha Wentworth as the Maharani, Verna Felton as Mrs. Simon, Lou Merrill as Smiley, Jack Lewis as Lord Esketh, Lal Shand Mira as Rashid, Wyndham Standing as the Maharaja, and Thomas Mills as Bates. Kay Francis will be seen in the Universal picture, It's a Date, soon to be released. George Brent's forthcoming picture is the Warner Brothers production, Till We Meet Again. He is currently seen in Paramount's Adventure in Diamonds. Gene Parker will soon be seen in RKO's And So Goodbye. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.